Igor's pinch hitting for Shanny <laughs> on the power play. But he doesn't have a one-timer. But he can set him up. <laughs> Igor, what excited you about coming here for this? Say again? What excited you about coming here for this? Well, this is special, uh, uh, special event in, uh, in my mind uh, when you uh, celebrate a special couple of wins back to back. Uh, with a special team, a uh, special coach, uh, and, uh, and a group of players, and, and the town, and the fans, you know. So that's uh, even they missing the game on Saturday back home. So, but I said, you know what? It's uh, I told the boys uh, in the locker room on Tuesday that I gotta go. So you you play without me uh, next game. So, <laughs> but but this is uh, uh, nice to see the guys in the locker room uh, in the in the hotel, and uh, looking forward for the, for tonight's reception. Could you still keep in touch with many of them or not? Uh, well, I, 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 I talk to Drapes a lot because, you know, what about, uh, I need some, uh, uh, I talk to Scotty, you know, about uh, the game, uh, Drapes, uh, about the young players or the players coming to KHL. Uh, once in a while, there's Shaney. Uh, not much with Stevie. Stevie too busy building this team, you know. And who else? Uh, 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 Martin Lapointe, you know, uh, he's asking about some young players who's playing in the KHL. Yeah, quite a few guys, yeah. yeah. Any of your fellow Russians <laughs> you keep in touch with? Oh, the Gates, you, the Gates, three of them, two of them. Uh, Russians, uh, any of your fellow Russians? Well, <laughs> the Russian players? Well, you know, Slava is not allowed to travel, you know, obviously, you know, the, you know the reasons, you know, Sergei. Same kind of stuff. Kazi been busy with his uh, team now. They think they won like five in a row. He's assistant coach. So, and uh, Vladi should be here tonight. You know. So, but everybody's saying hi. So, you know, when I talked to, uh, uh, talk to Sergey, so he was kind of, uh, kind of 50-50 was going to tra uh, travel, but he, he couldn't ask uh, his uh, superior to, <laughs> to come to this uh, difficult time uh, in the politics. You know, when, you, when you came to the Red Wings, obviously you had history back playing with a great team in, in uh, Russia. Did you, were you keenly aware of how good this team was when you arrived to play with it that was going to you know, get better and better? You know, the, I would say this question more like to Scotty Bowman. To Scotty, because he's the coach, and uh, to me as a player, uh, to be able to play uh, with a uh, Good quality players around you, uh, and uh, uh, makes the, makes your game kind of elevate your game, and plus uh, 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 give you more chance to uh, be successful. So, and uh, when you see the uh, a group of player, different caliber, uh, defensive players, offensive players, like uh, role players and the utility players, that's what you uh, you kind of looking for uh, for success and. Uh, and you have a offensive fly, a lineup, which is like the Russian Five and Stevie Y and Shinny and uh, and uh, Bulldog Martin Lapointe. You know he scored like a, a quite few uh, crucial goals. Mac and Drapes and uh, obviously defense Nick and uh, uh, you know those guys, Larry Murphy, Bobby Rouse, and uh, you know we have a, a, a like a very good ingredients uh, to be successful. So it's 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 not the same as uh, as the Russian uh, as the Soviet national team, but uh, but that was uh, uh, close to. Uh, to the side, which is like uh, ready to uh, fight, ready to uh, play, and ready to uh, entertain any time uh, during the season. You know, we had, well, I came here, Vladimir Konstantinov and Sergei were on the team, and the first year they brought back uh, Slava Kozlov, and he, I think he started in Adirondack. He didn't last long there, and he came with us. I was looking at the other day, I think he scored 30-something goals as a, as a first year with the Red Wings, and uh, then Slava came. We were looking for depth on defense and called uh, Lou Lamorello, and he was sitting up in the stands, and he always liked Slava, and he wanted to give him an opportunity, and it, it was not an easy trade, maybe, because every time you trade a draft pick, and Slava was about 36, 37, but you know what he did, and then that summer, uh, Slava kept bugging me to get Igor. You gotta get Igor. And I said, I've seen enough of him. He beat us last year. <laughs> with uh, he had a five-man unit, not, uh, only one Russian, uh, Makarov, and you know they they had uh, uh, Oselinch, I think, and they had uh, another guy on defense that was pretty uh, Norton and uh, Garpenloft. Uh, but they were they beat us that year, 
and uh, we had a lot of right wingers in the in the organization. Uh, Dino was really in the prime. We had uh, Ray Shepard scored over 30 goals. Marty Lapointe was coming aboard. Darren McCarty. So you know it's never easy when you trade a goal scorer, but it was a chance to get another. And I think that was the strength of our team because we had Sergey and we had. Uh, Stevie and we had um, Igor and, and Drapes, you know, down the middle, and uh, that was that was the, the crowning touch to get. We didn't use them all the time. I was always concerned that somebody would figure them out. Remember, I talked to Slava one day. Slava was always asking, you know, if you see anything, let me know. Let me know. And I told him, I said, Slava, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because I I can't figure it out either. <laughs> and that's the way it worked, you know. But we were. That's, that was another part of our team that we had, you know, we had Igor with, uh, he moved on the side and they were, when we needed that extra push, we had it, but it was a, it was a team. Scotty, would you have ever guessed that this many of your players from that team went on to coach and GMs and any of them surprised <coughs> you that they decided to go that route? I don't know if you say surprise, but, uh, you know, when players are, are able to play at the level these guys did, and you know, talk about Hall of Fame players. Uh, I think there's, I think there's nine of them, and uh, we also had, uh, you know, fellows like Paul Coffey and and Mark Howe. So, yeah, I I think it's always a surprise when they stay in hockey. I always wondered, with some of these players that are, are do so well, do they want to keep doing it? But it's in their blood, and uh, yeah, I think when you look back at the, the way that those those well, there's nine, but there's as you know and I know. I only had him for one year, Pavel Dotsuk. He, he, is he stopped playing yet, Igor? He's no? not playing anymore. No. no, if he's not playing, well, he, he's, 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 he's got, got, they don't do any more first-time ballots, but uh, he'll be in the Hall of Fame. So when you get that many Hall of Fame players, uh, you know that they're gonna, they, can, they can give the input, and, and I'm, I'm happy to see them in the league. Igor, did you uh, think you would go into coaching when you were playing? Did you think coaching was in your future? And now that you're doing it, how are you enjoying it? Talking about my caution? Yeah, getting into coaching. You know what, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great experience, I can tell you that. So that's, uh, to me, uh, uh, it's, you know, maybe, not, it, maybe a little bit too late, but, not, but never too late. So to give my, uh, your experience to the young players and, uh, and uh, you know, I kind of teach the players uh, uh, to enjoy the game uh, because, you know, the, the, the KHL uh, is kind of like defensive-minded game. So, and uh, I have a young team, the smallest budget in, uh, in the team, I mean, in the league. But you know we play in a we play in attractive hockey, so we got every game sold out, you know. And uh, in kind of a town, kind of Detroit, it's an auto industry, uh, and that city. So and uh, and uh, and to me, like it's kind of like a reflection of Detroit. So you go to the grocery store, people like uh, wishing you good luck, and uh, it's only happened in Detroit when I uh, when I play here. So now in, in that city, it's uh, it's all about the, uh, about the team, about the boys, about the uh, success and. Uh, and we set up the goal, you know, uh, uh, despite like I uh, uh, have no money, but I have a big heart and a big, uh, a big brain uh, for the <laughs> players. You know, we set up the goal to uh, go for the top uh, for the championship, you know, so because there's no, no other way you can uh, uh, tell the players, you know, this uh, rebuilding year we're going to build, you know, there's no time to build. So we, we, gotta just, we just got to go right away and, uh, and uh, surprise everybody. But Igor is a pretty humble guy because... I talked to him this, mor uh, this morning, and I said, how's your team doing, you know? And, well, he said, we're in the middle of the league, you know? <laughs> and then I checked the standings, he's second. <laughs> <laughs> the only team that's uh, ahead of him in his division is St. Petersburg. You know, you, I get a thing that gets the standings. He's 15-9-1, he's and, and like he said, there's probably, I don't know the league like he does, like, um, how many teams have a lot of money? About five or six, maybe? Five or six, yeah. yeah five there's, or six. There's, it's a good league, but... Five or six of the teams can get players and keep them, and right. you know it's not easy for the other teams. But uh, I did check his standings, and I'll be watching them. Scotty, Scotty I know you just celebrated a, a birthday, but are you still spending most of your time involved in hockey? It sounds like I go to the games in in Tampa. I st after Steve was there, I I got going starting in '05. That's when I moved down there, and uh, I haven't been at, at. They've only had two home games this year. But I, I generally, that, I think they stay away from October in the Lightning, been on the road a lot. But it's been a real interesting last three, four years, especially with it. They had a great team. Steve was instrumental in getting a lot of those players 
a lot of players on that team that were not drafted, picked up in late rounds. It's it's been quite a story. It's it's a lot like the story in Detroit when I came here and the players that we were able to add. Some of them weren't doing as well where they came from, but they came into Detroit and they became important players. Scotty, I was wondering if you had an opinion of Derek Lalonde when he was in Tampa and just watching that team and, and whether and how much you watch these Red Wings and what you think of them now. Well, I, I did see, uh, I met Derek a couple of times. I got to know John Cooper quite well and they had, they had a good staff. They have another young guy that's in there, uh, uh, Jeff Halpern, who works on, on face-offs. And they're, they've been always a well-coached team and Derek was, was, I guess, the number one guy with John Cooper. And uh, I like the way they played. Uh, they, as you know, they were a lot like us. They, they ran through one, one season scoring at will, and they ended up getting blown out by uh, Columbus. And they decided, doesn't matter how many games you win during the season, you better play better hockey. So they transferred the team into being a two-way team, not just defense, but not just offense either. But uh, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's it's a good opportunity. I've I've watched the Red Wings play, uh, not a lot because you know the, <laughs> there's so many games on every night. And uh, I was in Buffalo at the beginning of the season, and then I have been just moving down to, to uh, Sarasota. But um, you know they got a lot of new players on the team, and um, I think what it, people always think it's that easy to get a new a new group of players. There's probably half a dozen of them, and uh, and all of a sudden they're going to take off. But uh, I think they're just feeling their way through. They should have pretty good goaltending, I think. Um, that's an important position in the NHL. A lot, I mean, I saw what it does in Tampa. But, you know, you need two goalies. Uh, you can't play a goalie now 70 or 75 games. So I think it'll work out that the two goalies will battle each other. And uh, like, like all teams, I talked to Igor a few minutes ago. I said... The toughest part of the NHL is building your defense, and it's not easy. Um, you know, the, the, even Kenny Holland, we were talking this morning, and he wasn't there, but the, the um, Edmonton team had four or five first-round picks in a row, and everybody wondered. But no defensemen were available of that caliber. And I, I, I mean, I know a lot about Buffalo because I live there in the offseason, and, you know, they've been building a team for 10 years now. It seems like forever, but uh, finally they got... They were fortunate two of the last four years, the, the number one player available uh, was a defenseman. And they took uh, Shil or, uh, D Darlene about four years ago. Now he's, he's, he's going to be in the Norris conversation. That's how good he is now. And they have this young Owen Power. You people might have known. He played at Michigan two years. I mean, he's some player for his age. He's not even 20 yet. And I, I keep in touch with... Uh, Red Berenson a lot because he played with me in in um, St. Louis and I remember talking to Red about a year ago and he said N nobody can compare to Nick Lidstrom in my book the way he could play both ways but he said Owen Power has a lot of Nick in him he doesn't get involved he, he he's uh, powerful he's he can when he when he gets the puck Michigan usually kept it and that's the way he's playing with Buffalo so see they're a team that's um, Building from the back end out, I don't know how good they'll be, but but Detroit is in a it's in a, a tough rebuild because Ottawa, Detroit, and and certainly uh, when you look at it, uh, Buffalo, those teams are all all uh, you know they're they're in their rebuild right now, and then you're in with when you look at the Lightning and you got Boston, uh, maybe been a bit of a surprise, but I know Jimmy Montgomery. And uh, they got enough players to be to be real competitive. Um, the the uh, Panthers are, are maybe off to a different start, but this is an awful tough division. I mean, I I I, <laughs> I look around and wonder how how you're going to win games. But it's like that in the league. Scotty, how, do you, how do you think the the league has changed since you coached? As far as you started to mention defensemen and harder to find, are there other ways that speed, speed, yeah. I mean, I, I even went to a prospect tournament in Buffalo, and I was amazed. These are not even players that are in the NHL. There wasn't a weak skater of the whole group. I mean, there's been some great players in the NHL. Uh, even when I started to coach in the league, players that could get by on st strictly hockey sense, knowing the next move. But now, y if you don't move your feet out there, it's pretty tough. I mean, it's a, 
It's a fast game. You have to make quick decisions. Uh, everybody collapses down low. The, the point men are open, but uh, it, it's not easy. And uh, they're the only people that have time and space as your defensemen. And that's probably why they're so important, too. It's not just defending how they play on the point and make the right decision when they shoot. That's what Nick Lidstrom always did. You know, for a, de for a defenseman, he was so good both ways. And uh, I look at the, the way the game is now, and if you're a forward and you get the puck in the other end, you better make up, you gotta make up your mind right away. You're gonna shoot it and you better know who you're gonna pass it to. So it's quick decisions, but speed of the game. Igor, uh, you mentioned Stevie being busy running the team right now. I'm curious when you think back to playing with him, what is it about him that you think has made him have a successful career as an executive? Is there anything you think back to and kind of see that this makes sense in hindsight? You're talking about? Iserman. Stevie? Yeah. I played against Stevie first time in uh, 85 uh, uh, at the World Championships in Prague. So he was young, I think 19 or 20 years old. Uh, and uh, you can see uh, the, the, uh, the skill level and his uh, IQ and his uh, leadership on that team, on Team Canada. So, uh, and uh, when you play with him on the same team, and uh, uh, every day, day in, day out, and uh, every night uh, when he, uh, at least he skate up and uh, play in the game, so you, you can see that uh, uh, his, uh, his determination and his desire to be the guy who's going to be leading the way for the for our group, uh, and that uh, it's it's a really uh, a, a really important captain to have on the team. So because uh, he didn't say much, uh, right, Mac, Chris? <laughs> uh, but uh, but he was actually shown by his example uh, on the ice, and uh, and I played with him like Scotty. Uh, Scotty said I played play a few a few games with uh, Stevie on the line. Uh, uh, on the wing, and uh, you know, it's so easy when you got players like that around. You know, you don't have to uh, 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 take some time and uh, adapt. But you know what? It, it, it tells you, like, uh, such a great guy, such a great uh, leader, and such a great player. Uh, and uh, uh, no wonder so he was a captain for the Red Wings uh, for many, many years and been successful. So that's the, you know, in, in today uh, I know he's. Uh, uh, I mean, the biggest task to uh, bring the team back uh, to the uh, glory days, you know, and uh, with uh, uh, Chris and uh, some other guys who've been around, so uh, building the team and uh, kind of sharing some experience. And I just wish him a, a best of luck to uh, have a success uh, in today's game and uh, in, the, in the hockey town. Scotty, what, what, what don't you like about today's game? If you could change anything. Oh, gee. I don't know. I mean, it's it's not uh, the same game, so I mean, it's not fair to compare uh, eras. But uh, you know, it's uh, there's not. I think they've cleaned it up pretty good uh, as far as uh, you know the. Uh, it's not as uh, not not as di it's a different game because now nowadays uh, you know you, you you maybe have two or three uh, you have scoring lines, but in my day, like. Uh, role players were so important in all the good teams I had and now they're dropped down to another level but you know our team here had all those Hall of Fame players but I, I always said that Chris Draper, Maltby, Koser and McCarty meant so much to this team because you know your, your stars sometimes you're on the road against a weaker opponent they don't they don't start the game in 100% and th those guys do, and they set the table for you. So as far as changing the game, I don't think there's a lot I, I could do. They took out the center line. Maybe what I don't like the most is we don't have plays that start in your own end and you work the puck up. Uh, you know, like obviously Igor played with the Russian team and they they rarely shot the puck until it was an open net. But um, that's the only thing I miss is, is uh, it's so fast that you, you know you don't see five men coming up with the puck. You have the stretch pass, and defensemen, uh, when they get into any kind of a bind, they can throw that puck all the way to the far blue line. And I think teams are starting to they're starting to you know think about that that they can 
there'll be some changes in the game, and uh, it's not easy for... Probably the one thing I don't like, if I could pick one thing, I know they made a rule. I, I, I think that the stick penalties, on, I could be wrong, and probably a lot of people think, what's he talking about? But I don't like so many stick penalties. I, I, don't, I, I know they put it in because they didn't want guys using their stick on players' hands, and that, that's understandable. But there's a lot of teams, a lot of times, where it has no effect on the play, and, and it's, a, it's a stick penalty. And uh, no, I'm not talking about high stick. I'm talking about low stick. Because I think it's hard to play hockey with your stick on the ice all the time. When you're, when you're skating, you know, you're, it's hard. They don't skate with their stick uh, uh, on the ice a lot because you're moving your arms. That's the only thing I would say is uh, I'd like to see them be a little more selective. They changed the rule after I started coaching. It, uh, the, they give a penalty when it took away a scoring chance. Now, they've added a lot of different things to clean up the game. I understand that. But I, I just, uh, these in, inadvertent uh, uh, stick penalties that, that don't mean much, um, uh, you know, I, I hope the good, I think the, good, the top guys that get all the playoff games are, are, I mean, they're more experienced. So it's tough for a young referee. They come in and, you know, you've you, you got to start with somewhere. You start with a rule book. And sometimes the rule book is a lot different than reality. And, uh, you know, that, that's my opinion. Sorry, can you get back to the rhyme line? <laughs> yeah, but you had four guys on the line. See, they, they had four guys, you know. I mean, it wasn't fair.